Well, I'd like to open the select board meeting for um, April 29th. I don't have the um, paperwork in front of me. Could you read it, Jen? Yes. Thank you. Um, well, this is for the select board meeting. So you have to read the select board Zoom. You want me to read it? Yeah, it's not on mine. Okay. Oh, do you have it, Dave? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Welcome to the Deerfield Board of Health uh, and Select Board meeting uh, scheduled for April 29th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Um, location is uh, Main Meeting Room Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternate means of public access and where required public participation provided. In accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order, uh, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20, meetings that are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television, FCAT. Remote connections are noted below. A dial-in is 312-626. 6799. The passcode is 570012. Uh, the meeting ID is 911-604-1580. Um, this can be found on the uh, Deerfield website and under our calendar. And uh, if you wish to go Zoom, the access is there. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, the select board would like to acknowledge the disclosure from Robert Decker. Um, he was given a, a butter notice and he has notified us. So I would make a motion to accept his acknowledgement. Uh, Dave Wolfen will second. Is there any further discussion? No, um, just, just for a point of interest, the um, Bob is actually outside the district, but it's normal for the assessor's office to notify people uh, further uh, 300 feet or further out and Bob falls within that district. So he's not actually in our butter. Okay, thank you, Dave, for clarification. If there's no further discussion. All those in favor? Dave Wolf from I. Carolyn Ness, I. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Thank you, Jen. So we're all set. Um, I saw Bernie come in, so we don't have to worry about that, Bernie. Bernie, we just took care of everything that the select board had to say about Bob, so you can start your meeting when you want. Okay, thank you. Remember to mute yourselves, please. Otherwise I'm going to do it <laughs> if I hear something.
It is now seven o'clock, um, April 29th, 2021. I call the meeting to order. Am I on or am I muted? You're on and it's recording. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm gonna roll call first, please. Uh, Robert Decker. Robert Decker. I don't see him on the screen, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alex? Here. Uh, David? Here. Uh, Jen? Here. Yeah. Hello. Here. Okay, Mr. Mr. Decker's here. And uh, Adam? Took a lot. Good evening. Time. All right, thank you. Uh, first thing on our agenda is the review of minutes. Any comments? Uh, minutes? Adam, Mr. Chair, I make a, a suggestion that we move past the minutes and uh, move on with the hearing. I, I think uh, the folks for the hearing have been waiting for some time. Okay, thank you. Uh, we, well, then we'll skip the mail review. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Decker. I understand the Board of Selectmen want to say something. They uh, already no, did, Bob. It's been taken care of, Bob. You're all set. Okay, I was not. Thank you. You're all set. Thank you. Okay, we're going to do um, public hearing, and this is going to be the, um, the format we're going to use. We're going to have the applicant's uh, presentation, questions by the board, and then we're going to listen for public input, please. So let's stay in that order, and if you uh, have a question, please uh, use your name so that we know who, are, who is speaking. Public hearing, seven o'clock, the application for Treehouse Brewing for a special permit to change the use of the former Channing Beach site to a major commercial project as provided in the zoning bylaws C-179 section 2200, replacing a signet C-179-3200 and the height existing Existing buildings 179, section 22300. Okay, I believe we have a, a presentation. Do we have a presentator here from uh, Treehouse? Chairman, my name is Don Dubendorf. I'm an attorney from Williamstown and here on behalf of Treehouse Brewing. With me this evening are three principals of the company. Uh, Damien Gaudreau, Nathan Lanier, and Dean Rohan. Project manager, Kim Galinsky. Uh, our civil engineer, Tony Wanseski. Our traffic engineer, Jane Davis. And then I'm joined by uh, fellow counsel, uh, Mark Bornstein. Uh, let me tell you where we're at procedurally. On the 26th of this month, we were before the planning board on the phase one site plan review for this project. <clears throat> the board approved that, uh, that site plan for phase one. And uh, we have prior to that consulted with the select board and presented to the select board, have met with water and sewer and fire and police uh, with respect to what we envision on the site and how we do it. Uh, so we're now here before the board, as you said, for three special permits. The three special permits have uh, different characteristics. Two of them require a finding of this board of not substantially, what we're proposing not being substantially more detrimental than the existing condition. Those two are signage and the, the change of use with respect to the height of the building. The building height uh, we call it building C, and I'll show you that on a, on a plan shortly when I bring it up. The building height that we're dealing with there is 56, .6, uh, 56, feet, 56 feet 6 inches. So it is higher than the permitted, uh, than is permitted in the Deerfield uh, bylaw currently. It is non conforming and, a, and protected by uh, Section 6. So um, interesting uh, site we have here. Uh, Mark, perhaps you could bring up the site, the overall site plan. 
This is a this is a, a, a property of 45 plus acres. The building is, uh, is, is a combined 110,000 square feet. It is uh, again pre-existing and a non-conforming structure uh, due to the height it complies in all other aspects with the zoning bylaw. You can see to the north side there is currently provision for 218 spaces, uh, some uh, four or five times more than we will need for the phase one use of the premises. Uh, and we refer to these buildings as to the, to the further south is building C or wing C. The middle wing is wing B and the most northerly one is wing A. In wing A and wing C are the locations of the phase one activities. Phase one activities is in building C, a brewery operation, and in building A, a, uh, a warehousing operation in the location shown here. C is on the ground floor, that's the brewery location, and in A, the mauve color, I think it is, is where warehouse and cooler will be located. Out of this site, phase one includes uh, curbside pickup of product by the, by, the, by the public. In this addition, the only exterior change to the building, this addition of a six car portico. It's 54 by 54 feet. It, uh, it involves about approximately 3,000 square feet of net new impervious on the site and about 9,000 square feet of uh, disturbed area on the site. So, for, so none of the, the construction of this portico eliminates or affects any of the existing parking numbers on the site. There's also five trees that are being removed be, because of the addition of the portico, those trees are being replaced on a one-to-one -one basis. So let's talk about signage if we can. Maybe you could bring up, there are two signs on the property. One is a freestanding sign, uh, you, as you can see here. It, it will comply as proposed with all the requirements of the bylaw, but for, but for size, uh, it's proposed to be 90 square feet as opposed to the, the uh, cap at 32 square feet. It's located 131 feet from the street line. And as such, we consider it having minimal adverse impact given that kind of setback. The normal setback for a freestanding sign is 25 feet under your bylaw. In this case, we're well over that by several multiples. The second sign that we're looking at is the marquee sign. Again, this complies with all the requirements, lighting um, and, and the rest, except for size. This is proposed at 80 square feet and the building or, or this portion of the facade that it is located on uh, is existing. It is an existing facade, the existing footprint of the building and that's located about 183 feet from the street line. Uh, again, it, it is larger uh, in size than that required. And what we submit is, g given the distances from the street, and particularly given the orientation of this uh, marquee sign, uh, that this is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing location. In each of these two locations, the Channing Beat Company had uh, existing signs. So we're simply changing from the Channing Beat uh, presentation to the Treehouse presentation. And that's, that's what we have here. There's another limitation that I want to describe for you with respect to the marquee sign. It is limited to 0 0.08 uh, uh, of the uh, uh, decimals of the area of that facade, it complies with that requirement. So to, all the lighting, everything else, it's simply in both cases, in both instances of the two signs, it is a matter of square footage or the sign 
the sign area itself. Let's go to uh, let's go back to uh, the site plan, Mark, if we could, so I can show them Building C and what we're doing there. Building C is the building that exceeds the height pieces, and because of that, the structure is non-conforming. Uh, it's been there for many years. Uh, the the brewery will be located on the ground floor of Building C. We need, because we're changing and proposing to change through the use special permit we're seeking tonight, the entirety of the building, we're, we, we need a determination that the changes of use we intend uh, do, do not, are not substantially more detrimental with, than what pre-exists. None of none of the, the characteristics that make building C non-performing and thus probably the entire structure, none of those are being affected or changed by the proposed uses. So that's the second special permit we're looking for. And then the third special permit is, is a, uh, a use permit. Under your bylaw, you allow by special permit something referred to as a major commercial project. A major commercial project has three, uh, two or three elements to its definition. It is first a non-residential or non-agricultural use. We comply there. In a structure or, or, or occupying more than 50,000 square feet, we exceed 50,000 by almost two times or more than two times because this building in its entirety, all three wings contain over 110,000 square feet. And then it says that within that major commercial project, you are permitted uses that are allowed or allowable under your bylaw. The words allowed and allowable refer to uses by right and uses by special permit. Those, that's the reference in the bylaw to that which is, is uh, allowable. In the application, you'll see a matrix that we provided that describes the phase one uses, that being brewery, uh, warehouse, office, and the curbside retail proposal. And then you can see the proposed subcategories of use that we propose on the site in phases two and three. What we said to the planning board uh, is in, or to the planning board is that we would ask this board to condition its approval of our special permit for the major commercial project to, uh, by, by requiring us in each instance to go back to the planning board for site plan review with respect to the uses we would commence in phases two and three. So in other words, we couldn't start phase two using the building uh, for phase two or for phase three before getting them approved by the planning board. So what we're proposing is that we get the special permit for the entirety of these uses. If we had to change them, we would of course come back to the board, but we would, we would get these approved so we can begin planning phases two and three and we're very comfortable that the, that the site can accommodate these. Uh, I, I've, never, I've never dealt with a 45 acre site with this much frontage and this much building on it. I just never have. Uh, in our package, uh, let me go back to the, the first elements of the use, the phase one uses. In our package, we provided uh, parking calculations for phase one. Uh, we're going to have 20 employees. We're going to put, we require under your bylaw for the uses we have only 46 of the currently existing uh, 218 spaces. We also have provided uh, a, a traffic analysis that uh, reflects work done uh, and data gathered from the two counting stations on Route 5 and 10 to the north and the south of this curb cut. We uh, and, and data available from Treehouse with respect to their existing operations in Charlton 
we've gotten some anecdotal reports from the town of Deerfield with respect to uh, the vaccination uh, projects that have occurred on site while we're getting ready to start. And we've been told that in one case, we had almost 700 people vaccinated with about uh, with a staff of about 50 on site uh, during those vaccination sessions. So we're very comfortable that we can manage the traffic. Uh, we also provided the heights of the three buildings. The only one being relevant is uh, is the height of 56, six inches. We showed signage. And then we provided uh, letters from sewer water uh, with respect to the adequacy of the public infrastructure serving the site. So Mr. Chairman, would you like me to go through your special permit criteria uh, one by one? Is that helpful to the board? Or do you want me to wait and ask or hear if there are any questions on what we've presented so far? Uh, board members, do I have a consensus that we have any questions so far? Uh, Mr. Chair, Adam, can I be yes. recognized? Well, I would just like to thank the team at Trios for getting us the thick SV uh, binder well in advance. Um, so we've had time to review it. And I feel as though if they want to proceed with, uh, with going through each section, I feel as though that from what I've reviewed from, from this and from what the planning board meeting and I did it, watch the selectmen's meeting that um, it's a good project to move forward with. Um, Mr. Chair, this is Jennifer Remillard. I just, um, whether or not it will be covered further in depth in the presentation, um, I just have some concerns about the comparison numbers that they've provided for traffic. Um, just being familiar with the traffic issues that have been in Charlton. Um, and I'm curious to hear more um, in addition to what they've provided in their application, how they're going to deal with that. Um, because while they've talked about not having um, this size of acreage, their previous size, um, you know, was around 40,453 square feet. And that is a concern. Um, to see what will uh, take place for traffic issues. Um, because as we know, five and 10 is busy, but then you have 91, which exits right onto five and 10, depending on people going other ways and how that's going to affect um, in-town traffic as well. So those are some questions I would like to have answered. Good. All right, thank you. Those are, uh, those are similar questions that I have, but anyone else? Any other chairman? Oh yes, from the board, uh, from the board uh, specifically, Mr. Decker. Uh, my question deals with uh, when concerts are are, are uh, contemplated. I want to know something about that and the traffic and the decibel levels, etc. Yeah, I have some I have some questions about that. Uh, I wanted to consult the lawyer on this. Um, I was unable to get in contact with him about um, what areas we have control over. I mean, is this a one-shot deal or, or how do we control this if uh, they go to different stages? Um, I assume by what we've been told that once we sign off on this, uh, that's the planning board's gonna deal with it, not us. So it's a one-shot deal for us and I'm not sure where we stand on that without talking with our lawyer. Okay, I guess continue with them. Um, Sections uh, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, explain those to us, please. Sure, so let me let me first address the traffic concern because I think it's, a, it's an entirely appropriate one. The, uh, first of all, they've learned a great deal about uh, traffic management in the Charlton startup circumstance. And there are several layers of how they control traffic on the site, which control traffic on the site. And Jane Davis is here with us who was our traffic engineering can, and can add to what I say, but there are three elements to it. The first is all of the transactions occur, are paid for and are scheduled online. There's no, there's no drive-in ad hoc. You must, you must have an order in the order, in the order of queue in order to be served. There is, there is no, and they stop that by having 
traffic attendants available at several locations to make certain that you have placed an order and paid for an order. So that's the first. They have a volume control on a daily basis. Your bylaw uh, establishes under your manufacturing performance standards, it, it establishes criteria that have to be met in these instances. And what the traffic analysis does is demonstrate that we can do that. The second piece with respect to traffic is the traffic attendance and the on-site uh, the on-site uh, uh, signage. We have sufficient area around the perimeter of the existing parking lot and within the the aisle of the of the unused portions of the parking lot to queue many cars. So we won't we won't have a situation where we're queuing cars other than in the perimeter of the parking lot and in the aisles themselves. And we can manage that with the traffic. Mm -hmm. and so it is, it is our plan not to have that disturbed five and 10 traffic whatsoever. And then the last one is we've, we've consulted with uh, Chief Kachorik about this mm -hmm. at great length and uh, uh, very comfortable with, with uh, talking with him about the provision of uh, members of the PD, the Deerfield PD, if needed and if required, to manage the, the traffic at the, at the curb mm -hmm. cut. So this is a level of intensity that is decidedly less than what existed at Channing Beach previously. Mm -hmm. It is a level of, of volume of traffic that was that was is less than what was experienced in the vaccination session. And we're very comfortable we can manage that, that piece. Uh, does that answer your question, ma'am? Um, are you referring to me? This is Jennifer Remillard. Yes, Jennifer. Um, so I guess the, the concerns are is for distribution, you know, checking out your website and such. Um, for phase one, and I assume it will change as COVID changes uh, moving forward. Not but likely to, believe it or not. That's a, they, that's a preferred method for them. Right. Um, outside. But on average, um, you know, I've seen for the Charlton location. Now, mind you, I understand you're opening up another location at the Cape. So having three locations will probably lessen, but it also might increase um, you know, the interest from Western Massachusetts, even through New York. And um, I guess it's also to see, you're talking about the ability to loop around the, the parking lot. Yeah. Uh, what's the capacity that you see um, and, and the amount of line duration? Because on average, um, through your Twitter account and other information that's public, mm -hmm. it seems like right now with a low uh, distribution, it's around 20 to 30 minutes for people to wait in line. Mm -hmm. um, but at your, you know, high points in the future, are you going to be limiting order, ordering online? So there's not a huge capacity all on one day for distribution? Yeah. Or is it going to be opened up? Um, yeah, the, pri the primary, the primary control on traffic is the volume per day. The primary control is the volume, the number of of, of customers on a daily basis. That's the primary con traffic control. And, and that's, I'm sorry. Sorry, and everything will be ordered online ahead of time. So you'll know the volume and you're going that's, to cap it when it reaches a certain point. That's correct. We can manage it that way because it, it, it it's, it's otherwise it's, it's a nightmare. I mean, it's a, and you, you asked a very good question. So the primary control is there. I'll let uh, our civil engineer, Tony Wonseski, speak to the amount of queuing we can get on site. Tony, can you jump in and, and offer that information for us? Yes, hi, my name is Tony Wonseski. I'm with SVE Associates. Um, Mark, can you go down a few sheets to the sheet that shows sure. the signage? The signage, Tony? Yeah, that one right there. Oh, back one, right there. So um, what happens here is when customers place their order and they decide to come, it's, the orders are for the day, um, they'll enter the, the one curb cut that we have and they'll come up 
and um, everybody, I believe, knows where the vaccination entrance was. That'll be the, uh, the entrance where this portico is constructed, and that'll be the entrance for uh, the on-the-fly operation. So when people drive in, we will stop them at that, um, that drive aisle that doesn't have any parking on it. Uh, the reason to do that is we don't want to block that intersection for people leaving uh, the, um, uh, after they've picked up um, their order. So um, nobody's coming that, and that's where the, the, the beginning of the traffic, um, uh, the, the treehouse um, parking attendants will be there. Mm -hmm. So after they've confirmed that they do have an order and that they'll continue around the perimeter of the parking lot and follow in that line and queue until they um, can enter under the portico. The portico has six spaces and um, we can store 45 cars around that um, uh, perimeter uh, before entering the portico. So that's a, that's a considerable amount. If for some reason the parking attendants um, have a, a larger rush than expected and they need to queue more, then we can serpentine them through the aisles of the parking lot. So you take your first right and then back up, down, back up, and all the way back around. And that would add another 30 or so cars to, the, to about 75 cars uh, mm -hmm. queuing. And based on the um, information that we know and what it'll be controlled on this site, that should be more than adequate queuing space on site so that we do not have backups out on um, within the entry drive or back on the five and 10. Based on the peak, the experience peak in Charlton, and um, and where we're talking about controlling the volume of orders um, for a day. Um, and could you, uh, the person who's controlling, I, I think it was the previous speaker, the um, the screen, because it just looks to me and some of the other printout before, um, is there an entryway towards the back as well? Or is that the front? Okay, sorry, this is the railroad. It was just yeah, hard. The railroad's on the back, yeah. One entry in and around. Um, parking in the back will be, um, um, you know, for the employees. Um, so in the phase one operation, that parking lot should be wide open. Thank you. And if I, excuse me, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, um, when you move to phase two and with the concerts, um, I'm unsure, I did not, get to see the planning board presentation previously um, and just have been going through a lot of the documentation here. Um, will there be an additional uh, special permit coming forward for that or is that all being addressed now for the traffic flow? Um, and I guess I'm curious to see how that's gonna be handled as well. Yeah, so uh, I, I hear from both you, Ms. Remillard and from um, the chair, there's concern about the way we cast this. <clears throat> we were, there are two things in, in land you, 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 you don't, you wanna pay, pay attention to. One is you wanna lay all your cards on the table. In this case, we're trying to talk about all the uses we envision over time. And we'd like to get as many of those permitted as possible. We're, we're happy to come back to this board and have you review phase uh, two and phases two and three, if need be, if that's what you prefer so that you have control over those and not feeling like you're, you're, you're um, being irresponsible in what you're, you're, you're doing. We, we did this because you don't wanna segment a project and keep the boards in the dark. You gotta, you gotta tell them what you intend uh, for good communication and it's, it's simply appropriate. Uh, but we, we have not completed all of the work we need to do on phases two and three. We don't know all the answers yet. Okay. So we're happy if the board at the end of the, the evening, if you approve these special permits, we're happy to take a condition that says we come back to review the standards and the way we comply with those standards in front of both the planning board and the ZBA. We're happy to do that. I appreciate the transparency. And my only comment will be is that um, moving forward, you know, obviously, however, the, the chair and the rest of the board vote moving forward, I just would like to suggest if um, additional parking goes in certain places or changes um, that you look at the um, permeable um, 
you know, sure. yeah, people, absolutely. Yeah, no, two things. Another ways yeah. to make it more. Um, uh, sorry, it's late for me. Um, friendly for environmental situations and surfaces, you know, because that area has been such a great location and hasn't really been touched other than the buildings that are currently there. Um, and wildlife is really, um, you know, a, a prominent and in this in this particular location. Um, and I just would just like to see what those plans would be. So yeah, no, I, I think I think I hear you. Uh, and and we're happy to work in that fashion. I can tell you this, that there are a number of options with respect to going forward in phase two and three, and we, uh, we're still working on all those. So if, if the board says that a condition of its approval tonight is that we revisit with the board before we, both boards before each, uh, uh, each of phases two and three, we're happy to do that. Uh, we're happy to do that. Because I think at the end of the day, you should know that there are good tools in your zoning bylaw, particularly with respect to uh, impervious surfaces, stormwater management, and the rest. This project on phase one doesn't trigger that because the amount of disturbed area is so small. Uh, it's less than the trigger point, which is 12,500 feet. But in subsequent phases, there's no, there's no question that that may well occur. So you'll have the, the town of Deerfield will be well informed about impacts because that's the job we have to do if we're going to go forward. Thank you. Uh, I have a comment on this, but I'll wait till we're going to discussion on this at the end of uh, your six presentations for us, please. Okay. So uh, your 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 uh, special permit review standards again. These apply with respect to the major commercial project. <clears throat> the first one straightforward, uh, social, economic, or community needs served by the proposal. This is an economic project. Uh, we, we have done some work with the town in making uh, uh, the facilities available for storage of school furniture that wasn't needed this year and vaccinations, but this is a, a, an economic project. We expect to be good citizens and, and uh, expect to bring additional vitality to the economic life of Deerfield. Traffic, <clears throat> we've addressed, we have ways of controlling the traffic. We have sufficient on-site parking and on-site queuing space to make those pieces, of, uh, pieces function well. On this, on this particular uh, screen uh, plan, all of the deliveries will occur during off hours and they will be located at the back of the building where solid waste will be managed. You can see the loading docks there. Solid waste, there's also some additional loading docks. Solid waste disposal will occur back out there and the rest. So uh, we, we think the site has been, uh, as it exists, has been well designed to meet those criteria of your special permit provisions. Uh, number three is the adequacy of the public infrastructure. We've talked with uh, uh, Chris, uh, or Tony Wenceski has talked with fire and water and sewer. Uh, we've, others have talked with John Petrork. We're very comfortable that there's sufficient water supply on site and uh, adequate uh, capacity in the downgraded uh, public infrastructure all the way through to the, to the uh, sewage treatment plant. Neighborhood uh, <clears throat> neighborhood impacts. Uh, this is a 45-acre site. Uh, we're bounded on two ends, largely by forested land. Uh, it is an industrial district. Uh, it is not. Uh, uh, it is and bounded by a railroad, five and ten, north and south, forested land. We think the. The fact that this is a pre-existing facility on a property uh, of this acreage uh, mitigates for any negative impacts in that regard. Natural environment impacts, this is pretty light on the ground. We're, 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 uh, we're limiting the uh, disturbed area and the net impervious, uh, additional impervious land area on the site. So we're feeling uh, pretty good about that. The, 
the net new impervious is 3,100 uh, square feet, and the net area of site disturbance is 94, 93, uh, 9,500 uh, 9, square feet. We, we, we're not going to be emitters of smoke, dust, noise, et cetera. We're, we're, we're very light on, on the land in that fashion, and the quality of the public infrastructure is more than adequate. Uh, fiscal impact is straightforward. In the first page, we're talking about 20 new employees in town. Uh, we, ex we expect this, this uh, site to grow in value and its impact on the tax base of Deerfield to be positive uh, and grow over time. So we think in those arenas, uh, we meet or exceed your special permit criteria. In addition, we offered uh, our responses to your manufacturing standards because uh, there are manufacturing elements in the uses we're proposing, not just the brewery, but also the distillery, the winery, et cetera. So we provided the traffic analysis to, to demonstrate how we, we meet the, uh, the uh, daily traffic generation goals. Those are stated in the disjunctive. In other words, you meet one or the other we can meet both, and we're happy with, with that piece. <clears throat> we're happy with the way we can, we can control traffic both on-site and off-site, given the plans we've made and the way, way we can operate. Uh, noise impacts are minimal, largely, again, because of the, the layout of the site and the nature of, of the activities on-site. Again, we are an industrial district and we'll meet those thresholds. Vibrations, uh, odor, flashing at night. Again, we're going to have deliveries off hours uh, and no other external impacts of, of, of that sort. We proposed hours of operation that are within the requirements of your performance standards for man manufacturing and that we've demonstrated that there are uh, adequate sewer and water supply to the site. Stormwater we've talked about, given the amount of impervious, net new impervious and preserved <laughs> area. Uh, parking, we have 218 spaces. We're proposing 46 that are needed. Screen, screening of parking, you can see on this uh, plan, you can see the mature evergreens to the uh, west of the parking area. There's also a burn. Uh, an earthen burn that runs north-south to the west of that parking area and screens uh, that piece uh, quite well. <clears throat> We've talked about uh, number 10 addresses, trash and recycling. Again, these will, recur, these will occur in the rear of the building where we abut the Boston and Main Railroad as required here. Uh, no changes to existing lighting on site except for the portico. All of these are uh, uh, at some distance from the road and are using cutoff fixtures. Mm, the existing lighting is greater than 16 feet in height as your bylaw requires, but they pre-exist and we're looking to continue them. Uh, 40 acre site contains all the stormwater uh, and erosion impacts that, that we expect, however minor, to be managed quite well. And we don't, we don't generate any hazardous waste. So if you look at both the manufacturing standards and, and the, uh, the uh, special permit requirements, we think we meet these. We think this is a great opportunity uh, on, on a really special site um, for Treehouse. Uh, and we're, we're, we're excited about getting started. Other questions, Mr. Chairman? Oh, yes. Board members, any questions? I don't see any hand, no hands up. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. Question. He mentioned the distillery, a winery, and a brewery. Are they all going to be in that building to the south? The brewery will be in, in the uh, wing C for certain. The location of those other two functions, if they occur, are yet undetermined. 
Okay, so that's the south building, what used to be called the Winter Garden? Yes, still, it still is called the Winter Garden. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I wanna make my comment. Um, this business about um, conditions and coming back to us, that was a question I had from a town lawyer and I'm not comfortable buying into that until we have a chance to talk with a town lawyer. Uh, if we can legally do this, uh, I don't wanna see the town in a situation where we, um, we, we agree that this is a possible thing and then end up in court with a case that um, says we are going beyond our, uh, our bounds and uh, what we can do. Um, like I said, that was the question I wanted to ask a lawyer and I didn't have a chance to talk with him. Um, so, yeah, I do. I do know. Uh, I, I do know, uh, Mr. Chairman, that, uh, or at least I'm, I, I was told that uh, town council had a chance to review the proposed decision. Uh, we provided. I, I think Jennifer could clarify that, but that's what I was told. That uh, town hall had consulted with town council, and perhaps she could she could clarify that. Now, let's get this clear, that they looked at this, I understand he looked at this, but we're talking about a different situation. We're talking about uh, conditions of reviewing this at a second or a third time if we needed. That, was that put in this proposal initially? Yes, it's been in, the, we, have, we have proposed, we have proposed for the, for tonight we get approval of all three phases of use and go back to the planning board. What I'm saying tonight, and that was, and that was uh, what we submitted to, I believe was submitted to town council. I, I'm not certain of that, Mr. Chairman, but I was told that. And, and we can get confirmation of that. <clears throat> but what I'm saying tonight is we would like to, we, we can't segment what we've done here. We've got to show you all the cards at once. If this board says, before you commence phases two and three, come back to us. We're happy to do that. We're happy to do that. Maybe you are, but you know what? We have a lawyer that we hired to do this and I, I, I'm not comfortable without talking with our counsel first. Well, let me suggest something to you. Phase one is, is, is straightforward. You have all the information you need with respect to phase one. So one of the options for you tonight, rather than delay it, because I'd, I'd like to get this underway. One of the options for you tonight is to say, <clears throat> we can approve uh, the brewery operation, the warehouse operation, and the office operation, the phase one proposal we've made, and we'll come back to you for phases two and three. What I don't want to do is confuse the issue by asking for all of the, uh, the entirety of the phase to the phase two and three uses, if you're uncomfortable with that, Mr. Chairman. Oh, comments by comments by the board, please. Other comments? Uh, yeah, Mr. If Chair, I David you, Potter. Yes, yes, uh, David, please. Thank you. Um, yeah, Mr. Chair, I would appreciate if we were able to discuss this as a board uh, and not um, necessarily uh, uh, truncating this conversation because we don't have counsel here. So I'm just concerned that we're, we're able to have a discussion and assess what uh, is being proposed here. Okay, other comments? Um, Bernie, this yes, is Jennifer. I just wanted to say, um, I totally understand where you're coming from. Um, and do we have the legal right to just authorize part of their package versus all of it. Um, you know, so I, I support, while I am not a voting member, I support your um, decision on that. Well, you don't know, Jennifer, if you're a voting, voting member. Oh, okay, maybe I am, maybe I, I'm not. But right. um, I did, I did I'm not declare. I, I understand your concern and I support your, um, you know, getting that verification, I mean, because, their whole package is for submission. So do we have the right to just say we're authorizing for phase one um, without, you know, without uh, being subject to lawsuit down the line? Okay. Um, is the board comfortable with their own questions? Are we done with that? Mr. Chairman, 
Yeah, Mr. Decker. Did I understand uh, the attorney Dubernoff mentioned a draft decision? Did I hear that right or not? We, we provided a decision guide for both the planning board and the CPA. Has that been shared with this board? No, it has not. We got an email today. Um, it was sent from Casey Hold to- it, Jen, Jen, give your name so we get the name. I'm sorry, Jen. I don't want to interrupt you, but for the okay, record. Uh, Jennifer Remillard. Um, I received an email that was, I was blind carbon copied on. It went to Bernie directly. And it was um, a draft of the planning board decision and it's uh, dated April 26th. Um, I got that email today. Yes, as did I, David Potter. Right. Adam, Mr. Chair, yes, yes. Mr. Chair. Yes. I got yes. that email as well. Okay. And hey, Mr. I, Chair, I have a comment when you have a minute, whoever I'm in line. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. I received it also, but if there is a draft decision or a proposed decision, we should have been in on the loop to begin with and copied, either blind copied or what have you, it's not to break the open Bernie. meeting. Hold it, Jen. You have to wait, Jen. Go ahead, I'm Bob. A, you got the she floor. Can, she can finish. I'm just making a point that if there's a draft decision, we should have we should have known about it we shouldn't be on a need to know basis okay jen comment okay so jen comment yes yeah, so um we got the draft decision that was written by attorney dubendorf we felt uncomfortable with sharing it with the board we wanted to have council review it first so that it was sent to adam to review and adam passed it on to lisa we still have not heard back from lisa and so therefore we chose not to share it with the board because it's written from the applicant's side, not from the board side. And as well as it was written, we still felt we needed to have some comment from our council. So Casey, do you have anything to say about this? I thought Casey was here. So, I mean, we just I decided- to Lisa, I spoke to Lisa oh, 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 Hold it, Carolyn, hold it, wait a minute. We've not opened this up to public discussion. We're staying I, to the board, I please. had my hand up. No, while right. we, we're, we're, if you remember what I said, the comments will be, the public comments will come after the board is done. And that's what I was gonna ask, is everyone had a chance to speak their piece? Uh, uh, no, Mr. Chair. Board, board members are still waiting, Mr. Chair. Okay, yep. so with Carolyn, I'm sorry, but as soon as we're done, then I'm oh, going to- Oh, no, that's up. all right. I just wanted to let you know I spoke to Lisa. That was all. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Who's, who is next in line here? Uh, Mr. Potter can go before me. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. No, I thought Adam was already waiting. Go ahead. Okay. Well, Mr. Chair, my recommendation would be <clears throat> that at a bare minimum, we move forward with phase one. And if they want to come back, uh, if they're willing to come back, we should mirror what the planning board did between- the last, you know, with the other two phases. I mean, it's an exist existing structure with an existing um, area, you know, and phase one is a very limited impact. I think the applicant has done a good job if you go through the full binder at length, and I know we're a volunteer board and a lot of people might have not had the chance to go through it. Um, I think they're being pretty upfront and I feel it's appropriate to move forward tonight with it, at least at least the phase one, and if not the approval, or if we need to have a meeting next week, I think, or, or sooner I'm available to do that. If, um, if you want to hear from Mr. Costa or, or Ms. Mead your, yourself, I just, I don't, I don't want to hold the applicant up on starting their, their phase one any longer than we, when they're reasonably possible. Okay, David, you were next, Dave. Yep, thank you. Um, um, I agree with Adam uh, in some respects. Uh, I, I, I value this opportunity to have us discuss this now with the applicant here. And uh, certainly uh, I think we want always in these kinds of situations to have a reference to our town council. But I wanna just take this opportunity if I may to try to clarify 
uh, you know, or have the applicant clarify uh, what exactly are, uh, are they requesting from us? Uh, because it does seem to me that we're talking about multiple phases, but um, what I see in their application is um, that they're requesting a special permit to change to a major commercial pro project. And um, uh, I'm, I'm not exactly clear if that embodies or includes all of their three phases or if it just gives them the right to be a brewery here and um, then, um, you know, in the future they may develop and they're sharing with us those possible plans, but I'm not clear if them changing the use uh, to a major commercial project has everything to do with these three phases. And then the second thing is this replacement signage and the height of the existing building seem to have nothing to do with these multiple phases. So I'm, I'm not sure exactly why it is that we're focused on these three phases if that's not what we're permitting. Okay, uh, who is, all right. Has everyone had a chance to make a comment? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Decker. If you look at the application and the, and the page uh, three and four, it tells you exactly what they want. And they're looking right now, their petition is for all these things that are listed. All right, Mr. Dubinoff said that he's willing to either uh, withdraw these phase two or fa and phase three or to continue them. Uh, the question, this is, they would, if we granted everything that it's on here that's asked for, uh, they would probably not have to come back to us at all from what I can see. Uh, but there's an awful lot of stuff that's here. Uh, phase two and phase three uh, are of some concern. Uh, as for the sign, I don't have a problem with the sign. I don't have a problem with the brewery in phase one. And but my concerns deal with the um, re you know, the, a bar being put in uh, and, uh, you know, the concerts and concerts in particular uh, in the decibel levels. So those are my concerns. Yeah. Okay, any other comments? Uh, Jen, a, yes, go I, ahead, Jen. Thank you. thank you, this is Jen Gannett. So in my experience, if you have a special, you have a, an application for three special permits for the signage, for the height and for the use. So you can go ahead and vote the, the sign if you feel that it's, it meets all the requirements and the height that meets all the requirements as well as the, the use. And you can, and without council's approval, make a condition that it's being approved that they come back to the board before phase two and three. And that's what uh, Attorney Dubendorf was suggesting that can be a condition that you put forth so that it's before they do anything more than the brewery. That's this is Jennifer Remillard. I just have a question. Um, would it be relevant to because the application and all of the attachments are specific to all of the phases? Would it be who of them to? Uh, modify or withdraw and resubmit an application specifying they only want to utilize phase one. And that way we don't open ourselves up to any legal action pertaining to phases two and three and that they have to specifically come back for that. Well, I think what, what you would be approving and is, is the fact that they are going to do these things, but you get to see it and make modifications to those sections before that they happen. So let's say then you know exactly where the distillery is going to be and you know exactly where um, wine is going to be served or, or what the uses are. They just would need to come back with those details that right now you're saying that this, this the whole use of the, the commercial use of the Treehouse Brewery at this location is being approved. Right, and the, and the point is with the, this is Jennifer Remillard, um, with the points being those other commercial uses, specify the other pieces for the uh, retail sales for the restaurant. And um, I know a lot of people in the community might be concerned about the concert shows, you know, timing 
noise. I mean, you know, we've had a lot of um, community comments in regards to the potential park that's coming and it's within the same vicinity. So my concern is, you know, do our community members want more information on that? And if we go forward and approve this permit tonight after discussion, um, are people gonna be uh, upset? And, it, you know, we've gotta look at everything, not just that or just what's there. It's If it's all included in this application now, um, even if you put the special uh, questions in, or conditions in there, what if traffic is above and beyond what their estimates are? You know, do we have the capacity as a board to modify any of those changes up two and three, even when they, if, even if they do come back? Yes. That can be, a, this is Jennifer Gannett speaking again. So that is a condition that you can put. If, if the traffic counts go well beyond what they would say, you would have to come back before the board to modify the permit. So those are all things that the board can talk about and consider and write down as conditions that would bring back Treehouse to the ZBA to be heard for whatever problems. And that's all what you have to talk about, your concerns. And can it also be an added condition possibly amongst the board that we're gearing or that we have to have traffic counts uh, multiple times a year submitted or at least once a year submitted, depending on the timing, um, just to just to get during at least the first year before they go to phase two and three, um, what what that is? Potentially, yes. This is Jennifer Gannett. Okay, David, you had your hand up. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, David Potter. Uh, I just um, am am in agreement with what Jennifer is saying, uh, Jennifer Gannett, I should say, um, in that. Um, you know, I see that there are concerns about many aspects that are being laid out in, in phases two and three. Um, I think that, um, you know, we are being shown in a transparent way this, um, uh, this organization's vision, uh, which is not really necessary. They're, they're not you know, obligated to share this with us. They're, they're doing it, I think, um, in a partnership you know, uh, uh, manner. And uh, you know, if they had only come to us with this brewery idea phase one, we would be considering only that as the commercial project. And then as they went forward with some development ideas in their future, they would come back to us, which is what they're really saying is gonna be, you know, happening if, if that's how we want it. And I'm sure that's do, that's how we want it. Um, so, um, you know, um, um, I think we have many uh, powers of these conditions to monitor and, um, you know, evaluate this project as it goes forward and partner with them. And I think the traffic count is a good idea. That's a very factual and, um, you know, informative piece to keep tabs on um, how, how the operation is, is performing up to what they're saying. And then, you know, do they have the capacity and the wherewithal to go forward with phases two and three? Um, be, you know, notwithstanding all that I'm saying, I still think it's a good idea to take our time. And I wouldn't want to see the board make a decision tonight. Um, in my opinion, I think it's worthy of uh, this conversation and, and then um, considering uh, council and coming back to meet again. Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, Mr. Sekulas here. Yes. Well, why don't, if the board members are all set, maybe we should hear, it's eight o'clock. If there's public comment, maybe we should take some public comment and see where the public's at. I just, just a thought to try to move things along here. Okay, I know thanks. Ms. Ness maybe wanted to speak. Yeah, yeah, that's why I was gonna give it, uh, wanna give a chance to the public, because we can still speak through this, but uh, co public comments. Uh, Ms. Ness, you had your hand up, so I, any objections to letting the public uh, speak? You're invited okay. entitled to it. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Ness, I believe you have a chance. You had your hand up and you waited. Thank you. Wait. Thank you, Bernie. This is Carolyn Ness, uh, Chair of the Board of Selectmen and Board of Health in Town. I did want to say that I, um, before, 
um, Lisa Mead did, our lawyer did review um, the planning board decision and um, the other decisions submitted by do, um, the lawyer, uh, their lawyer, Don Dubendorf, and she did make some changes um, and it is satisfactory to her at the moment. Um, anyway, as I stated before, as a public comment, I wanted to say that as I stated at the planning board um, public hearing, the select board is very excited to have Treehouse want to locate here. Um, they have been excellent, excellent neighbors already. Um, they have graciously allowed us to use um, their warehouse facility, both for school storage of the school furniture so that we could have um, safe distances, um, you know, between the kids at schools and also for our COVID clinics. Um, as a select board, we um, you solicit our comments um, before your public hearings and we would normally address, you know, like traffic concerns. And as I stated and before, you know, we've had between 500 and 700 um, size clinics uh, with, you know, 40 to 60 volunteers at any one time and the traffic, there was no traffic issues. As a matter of fact, normally we have several police officers involved with our um, clinics and we ended up just having one and um, because there was, there was not any issues at all with traffic flow or um, anything like that. Uh, the other, the other uh, we support the application for relief for the height is a pre-existing condition, you know, building. Um, the, everyone is, has seen the winter garden. It's a lovely building. It already pre-exists. Um, the signage, uh, there is the Channing Beat sign, sign uh, on the wall that faces north already. Um, it's just replacing the sign. It's a, bit, a little bit larger, but again, it faces north. It doesn't really face traffic and public. Um, the sign is, the other sign that they're asking for is, is setback. And um, if you look at the size and the setback, it is appropriate for the setback. Um, so as I said before, the um, select board does support this um, application very strongly, and we hope you will uh, make every effort to approve it tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we other ha hands up? Do I see other hands up here? Comments? Yes, uh, Mark. <coughs> Oops, sorry. No, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Sorry, I my audio cut out on my laptop, so I'm I'm controlling the presentation. I'm also speaking to the phone, so I apologize for for it being somewhat disjointed. Um, uh, through the chair, just to address Miss um, uh, Remillard's comment, um, I we completely understand the concerns about potential impacts related to phase two and phase three. Um, it, it, it seems to seems to me, and as I, it seems to um, uh, Attorney Dubendorf, that conditions of approval could address those potential impacts. So. When we're proposing as, as an alternative to the submission, um, uh, a condition that, that Treehouse return in order to present the proposed uses um, in, in for phases two and three, it's not so much to present the particular phases, we were, re were respectfully requesting that those, those uses be approved, but those uses would only be able to be enacted pursuant to a condition of approval if we are able to establish for this, for this uh, board that the impacts um, are, are, are minimal and that they're, they're, they're not to a detriment to the neighborhood. They're uh, beneficial from an economic standpoint that, they, um, that there aren't natural environment impacts. So what we're proposing is essentially to establish the same criteria that we've already established um, um, or have sought to establish with respect to phase one um, in future submissions. Uh, so I, I just I would just like just to clarify that point, and I think Ms. Gannett um, similarly similarly tried to express that 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 um, that point that the conditions of approval um, can serve both purposes. One, that Treehouse is able to plan for the future, can uh, engage architects to think of think through how they want to use their spaces, and then move forward by presenting these these proposed uses to the to the boards before uh, obviously applying for a building permit. Or, um, or engaging in any of the particular uses. So I just wanted to make that point clear. It, it might've already been made clear, but um, I just wanted to emphasize that point. Thank you. I just wanted to tell everybody that's listening tonight, this is Jen Gannett, that Mark is also sort of co being attorney for Treehouse. So when uh, attorney Dubendorf retires, Mark's gonna take over. So in the future, um, 
he'll be, you know, coming back to the boards, just so you know, right, Mark? <laughs> Yes, thank you for that. Yes, no, so I will be the one that will be working with, and we've already, you know, um, started to think through how we would, we would seek to, um, you know, implement phases two and three. And at the forefront of those discussions are the potential impacts. So um, we hear the board at this at this stage that the the initial um, uh, proposal and that um, the the uses all be permitted as of right, and that any future impacts be approved by the planning board pursuant to the site plan approval process is not acceptable. Um, so to that point, um, I, I would respectfully request that this board uh, approve the special permit uh, for a major commercial project with the condition of approval that, um, that we return before commencing any of the phases, phase two or phase three, and they're listed in the application materials that propose additional phases. So you're able to pinpoint and follow the particular uses, which is also very helpful for the building department uh, Mr. Walden can, can track and see what the uses are, what the building permits that are applied for. And that way we can have a very comprehensive discussion about potential impacts. So we're able to talk about um, uh, impervious surfaces. We're able to talk about traffic. We're able to talk about um, jobs. We're able to talk about utilities. So we're, we're happy to have those conversations. Um, but in terms of the use itself, we're just seeking that this board uh, uh, approve the commercial project. So that way Treehouse can begin to to plan for those particular uses. Thank you. No, my, my, your comment that you made, you said you're gonna go back to the planning board. You did not mention you're gonna come back to us. No, uh, uh, respectfully, sir, uh, uh, maybe I misspoke. Um, in our initial application, we, if, you, if you look at the uh, statement and support, we had framed the proposal as a request for the major commercial project and then subject to um, the, the, the already requirement to return to the planning board for site plan approval. Given um, this, this board's uh, concerns related to potential impacts for phases two and three, what we are proposing an alternative um, as, a, as a different condition of approval is that the commercial project special permit be approved for the uses that are listed in the application before you, but subject to um, the board uh, determining prior to the commencement of those uses that um, the the uh, the benefits of those uses to the community do not are not outweighed by any potential impacts, which is generally the criteria that special permits are granted um, under Massachusetts law. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna go back to the fact that I did not have a chance to talk to council, and uh, I'm uncomfortable myself, uncomfortable with a verbal agreement without talking to council that we can legally do this. But Bernie, Mr. Chairman, yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, you want me, Mr. Sokolowski or Mr. Decker to go first? You can go first, you spoke up. Go ahead, Adam. Bernie, they meet the criteria. They're not asking for anything that they don't meet the requirements from in any type of common scaling here. I don't think that we're working into territory that is opening us up for litigation in, in any way uh, on approving the change of use permitting. Um, if you feel otherwise and don't want to move forward with a vote tonight, that's that's your prerogative as chairman. But, you know, we grant these permits uh, we on, on a regular basis without, I know the size of the project is large, but it's really not very much different on the signage and the use change as aromic filters or the antique place. Well, Mr. Decker. Mr. Chairman, um, I don't have too much problem with phase one, but I don't want to make a finding uh, relative to those five criteria on phase two and phase three until we actually see what's proposed, okay? I think that, you know, which it's like, you know, saying, well, you can, you can be nice guys and bring it back to us, but you already made a finding. And I don't know that we want to make a finding on anything more than phase one uh, this evening. And I don't want to hold them up either. Uh, but, but I don't want to uh, get into the concert and the rest of the stuff that's listed in phase two and phase three at this point. That's my opinion. Mr. Chair, Adam, I have another thing. Yes. Well, if if whatever the applicant sent through Casey in the administrative uh, branch in the selectman's office 
to Lisa Mead and we got a copy of that back. I understand they can't share it with us because it wasn't at a at a open meeting. I think maybe that would alleviate some concerns. Well, I think at this point it's a public document because uh, we understand it exists. And, well, I agree. Uh, if it exists, it's a public document. It should have been shared with us to begin with. All right. Um, but anyway, I just am concerned about making any findings going forward. I don't mind making the finding about the existing building and the change of use and the height of the, of the tower or what have you. I don't have a problem with that. I just want to make sure that we understand everything going forward and that we take baby steps with it. Okay. All right, this is Jen Remillard. We have other hands up for public comment. I think we should probably hear them. Yeah, I didn't see any hands up. That's what I was looking for. I'm sorry. Right, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank yes. you, Jennifer. You're welcome. So we have, we have Lily. Yep. We have um, David Potter. We have Dave Wolfram. We have Lori Bouchada. So there's several. And Mark All again. Right, so I guess uh, pick, pick one up. We'll start with them, please. Okay, Lily, go ahead. Hi, thank you, uh, Lily Dwight. Can I ask you first to do, stop doing the screen share because then I think maybe we can see everybody who has their hands up if we don't need it right now. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm Lily Dwight. I serve on a few committees in town and I'm wearing my Community Preservation Committee hat right now and I'm not speaking on behalf of the committee. I'm just sort of thinking at it from that perspective. And I just would like to say that I think that this project will bring great revitalization to our community. And the number of employees, I think he said 20, that, that's fantastic. And I think it will bring life and preserve, well, and actually advance our sense of community in town. So I just wanted to say that from that perspective. Thank you. Okay, how about Dave Wolfram? Good evening, Mr. Chair. Dave Wolfram, Board of Selectmen, Town of Deerfield. Um, one of the things that's a little confusing about this is that we're dealing with somebody that's putting all their cards on the table ahead of time, which as a town, we're not used to. Uh, in reality, they just want phase one approved and they want us to know what phase two and three are going to be without surprising us down the road in a couple weeks or a couple months. Um, you know, this is going to be an important part of the financial well-being of the town of Deerfield. Uh, it's um, these folks have been very good to work with and it's essential that we try to get them, you know, able to start brewing beer and selling the beer out of that location. The, um, you know, as to, with the findings of the planning board, uh, the planning board is approved phase one with coming back to phase two and three. That's what the findings is. Um, this board, the ZBA has the ability to do the same thing. They can, you can approve phase one and have conditions on two and three without legal implications from my understanding of what I've seen so far. And, you know, and it's nothing unusual to what the board has done in the past. It's just doing the same thing over again. Um, and in phase one, basically everything that Treehouse is doing is well within the guidelines of what zoning allows. Uh, it's, um, and here again, I've got a, compliment uh, the folks at Treehouse uh, and what Don has put together for us and kind of lay out everything that they, you know, um, plan on doing with this building to enhance us. You know, the concerts and stuff, the, the initial talks of the concerts are all inside. Uh, they're not outside. The, uh, what they plan on doing with the beer garden, a lot of that is, you know, long range plans. But as Don had mentioned, None of this stuff has been done with the architect yet. So they don't have definitive plans on two and three. They just want us to know what they plan on or hope to do with two and three. So that's all I have to say right now. Thank you. Okay, other comments? Uh... Lori? 
Hi, um, as an abutter, I just wanted to state your full name. Sorry, Lori. Oh, sorry, Lori Busada, um, 193 North Main Street. So we are abutters. We are across the railroad um, directly from Channing Beat. Before the, the trains changed, we used to jump the track to go to soccer games. Um, we have heard some of the you know, merriment from the antique um, car shows over the years and, and cheering from um, soccer, but even big outdoor gatherings like that has not been um, a problem. It made us feel like we were part of a vital neighborhood. The only thing that has been disturbing about the property as Channing Beat has been um, some really strong lights. But I believe, um, so I would like to hear, I believe that the lights are going to be um, facing down now, um, looking for the wording. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, that, that makes me feel good, that cutoff feature, fi fixtures. Um, but if I read what's on the Treehouse Brewing website, they tout the qualities of our town that really speak to me that we are at the foothills of the Berkshires we are the entrance to all kinds of natural outdoor experiences um, the, the river the mountains and so a company that is putting that forth as why they want to locate here I, I think is a, a company that I we should really welcome so I, I hope that we can give them the go ahead to get started. Um, I know I have family members on the other side of the, the state who are really excited about this. I think it would be a really exciting, um, you know, uh, addition to our community, really revitalization. So, and, and I just wanna say uh, it is different than the park because there's a railroad between the neighbors and this facility so that's not not the butters are right not right next door so I do think any noise impact will be minimal thank you Lori um Don Dubendorf would you like to say something yes um Mr. Chair we're we're quite comfortable with proceeding tonight with a phase one approval uh it is there is with the per with, with, with the request of the applicant, there's no legal complexity involved. We really did do as Dave Wolfram suggested. We tried to lay all our cards on the table at that, and then wasn't meant to confuse, it was meant to inform. And so tonight, we're happy to have you approve phase one, just as the planning board did. Those two elements are laid out and we have, Planned. I wanted to speak to something that Ms. Remillard spoke to. The, the bulk of the disclosures in there, the traffic, the, the parking calculation, the, the rest of the work, that's all phase one focused. It's not phase two and three focused because we, didn't, we don't have all that information done. We are yet planning that. So I wanted to make sure you knew that. And we're not looking to get a blank check. We're happy to come back. And, and so, and we can amend tonight, particularly because the public notice uh, would have been from something much greater than you would have ended up granting. If we were going the other way and ending up with asking for more than we originally applied for, that would be something that should give the board pause legally. But in this case, if we say, look, we're looking for phase one approval tonight, We'd like to get that done so we can get underway. I think that's fully appropriate, and 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 I don't I I don't imagine any set of circumstances under which town council would disagree with that. We are in in effect saying, okay, don't give us all of the uh, the uh, special permits for all the uses because you're worried about the blank check appearance of that. I get it. Let us come back and we'll do that. So tonight, approve. Phase one, those three elements, signage, height, change of use, and the major commercial project for those three subordinate uses, office, warehouse, on the fly, five, and brewery. That's what we're asking for. That, that, that'll eliminate the confusion and the board's legitimate concern. I think Mr. Decker spoke to 
I, I don't have enough to make findings on the other uses. That's not an in, inappropriate comment. I, I think it's, it's fair. So we're happy to say, we don't want you to make findings when you, when you don't have enough data. So let's stay with phase one because that package is complete. And we don't know how to make it any more complete, frankly. It's full. We've, we've given you everything we know about phase one. Thank you, Attorney Dupendorf. Uh, one more hands up, Bernie. It's Tolly. Yep. Hi, good evening, everyone. Tolly Stark. I'm on Keats Road. I'm also representing Deerfield for Responsible Development. I just want to start by thanking the board um, for listening to everything tonight. Um, I really appreciate how thorough everyone has been and clearly um, very prepared looking through all of the different phases as well. Um, and I also want to thank Treehouse for um, being so transparent and coming in as a community partner um, into Deerfield, which is something in the very recent uh, past we haven't seen with some um, proposed development. So I just want to say that Deerfield for Responsible Development and other folks in the community really appreciate that. Um, I also have had the privilege of serving as the um, operations chief for the Frontier Emergency Dispensing Site, which has been um, running the vaccination clinics along with FERCOG. And um, <laughs> during my experience there, we have had you know 700 people or whatnot come in to Treehouse to get vaccinations. And I was actually extremely surprised um, how minimal the traffic was, how um, amazing the flow went with people coming and going. Uh, we did not have a need for any of the town services or police officers at all, other than the ones that were um, one officer that was actually inside the clinic with us. And um, also we had 50 plus um, volunteers that were parked there as well. And I know after looking at the plans and attending the planning board uh, meeting the other night, that phase one essentially um, <clears throat> would be, uh, you know, pick up service of beer and whatnot, which is also controlled through Treehouse's app, as I understand. So they actually control time and whatnot with that. Um, so I just want to say that having been there at the clinic and seeing that many people come and go and also seeing all the parking of volunteers, that there was absolutely no disruption to the neighborhood. There was no concern about traffic flow. Um, it really went remarkably smoothly, which um, I know I definitely had reservations about as well. Um, so I just want the board to know that. I don't know if you are all aware of that or not. Um, and also I understand that, um, you know, Treehouse is, been very transparent about bringing all these phases to you. And I really appreciate that. And I know it can be a lot for the board. And I also really appreciate the board's been through a lot this past year. So I understand that you want to do your due diligence. And uh, Mr. Chair, especially you, I know that you want to be very cautious as you move forward. But it would appear with the information given tonight um, and hearing from the different attorneys and from our own town representatives that at the bare minimum, um, I would really hope that the board would consider um, supporting phase one and supporting the signage as Deerfield for Responsible Development supports as well. And, um, you know, as Treehouse has said, they're more than willing to come back and have you guys look a little closer at the other phases, which I know the planning board intends to do as well. So I think we have a lot of oversight for um, a really great business that's going to come into our community and um, really create some vitality and much needed revenue and whatnot. So I really appreciate you guys listening tonight, taking the public comment. And um, I really hope that the board supports um, passing at the very least phase one. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Bob Decker. Yes. I just wanna point out one thing in the, uh, in the zoning bylaw that deals with the graphs and what have you, drive-in service, including restaurants, but not including ATMs or teller lines are not allowed in an industrial district. Now, this is a little bit different than what they thought of. I just wanna make sure that it's clear. Uh, we wanna allow it, the curbside pickup, but, we, but I don't know whether or not that's gonna uh, stop it by having an end there. So I just wanna point it out to you. Okay, it's on page. Have a hand up. 
Bernie, uh, I'd like I'm to kidding. clarify as Board of, of Board of Health and Board of Selectmen, it is a joint meeting, Bernie, so the Board of Selectmen can speak, but um, I would like to clarify that for Bob. It is under the Board of Health um, um, recommendation that we um, would recommend the um, on the fly because of the COVID conditions. This is something that they developed um, because of COVID um, conditions and um, I would say that this is very safe, good operation from the Board of Health standpoint. My only concern was that it has an N, so council could have to say something. Uh, okay. uh, Mr. Chair, I'm happy to address that. Yep. This, this is Don Dubendorf. Go ahead, Mr. Dubendorf. All right, thank you. <clears throat> the uh, the, the bylaw in the use development stage or uh, chart uh, allows retail incident to manufacturing. It allows outdoor retail as well. And we qualify under both of those standards. And that's why we are allowable or allowed in, in industrial. I agree with Mr. Decker that the typical drive-in where you are picking up something to eat and paying for it at the same time or, or entering and exiting the building at the same time is not permitted in the industrial district. But in this case, we are different from that. We are web-based in terms of all the transactional work. The only thing that's happening is that there is a delivery of product, period. So that's the distinction we made and we're, we're comfortable with, with that use category, Mr. Decker. It was just a point of clarification. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm with you. And I, I think it's a good one. It's one that we, we looked at when we were working through it originally. So it's fair. Other comments? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, David Potter. David. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, I understand uh, your concerns. Um, but I also want to frame it in terms of uh, past um, situations where we um, uh, may approve something with conditions that get, you know, the final approval is delayed because the conditions and the write up of the, the decision has to go to the lawyers. We've already heard from Carolyn Nest that uh, our lawyers did review and approve this. Um, so, you know, my earlier uh, concern is, is, is greatly alleviated. Um, I, I would um, uh, think that we could get to the point of, of, of voting on this tonight um, with the understanding that we're, we're uh, the final vote uh, with uh, input from council comes down the road shortly. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Jen, Mr. you had your hand up next. Um, I, uh, Mr. Chair, Jennifer Remillard, I just want to concur with um, David Potter. I think knowing that uh, Mr. Costo or the, you know, whichever attorney is reviewing it um, on behalf of the town uh, with those conditions and just approving phase one and having them come back with the conditions for phase, you know, two and three, um, I, I would not be, you know, opposed to moving forward with knowing that uh, council would would look at that. Bernie, Carolyn. Um, council would probably have to, based on your vote, would adjust the um, uh, a decision based on the phase one only. If that's gonna be your vote. Yeah, the, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. The, the a phase one approval is very straightforward. Phase one approval would not approve phase two and any of those uses. So we would, it would be very straightforward uh, uh, and it would mirror what the planning board did. It would grant us three special permits, one for the use, i.e. the brewery, those listed brewery office uh, warehouse and uh, re retail uh, incident to uh, brewery and retail outside. Those phase one uses would be permitted. The, the requirement of the permission on the change in use due to the height of the winter garden that pre exists and the signage uh, increase, those can be straightforward 
and then the obligation. We have no if if it's done that way, we have no right to to insist on anything more than what you give us, which is phase one, period. Just like the planning board did. It's it's not complicated legally at all. Um, but I I do have a concern about timing. I'd like to get these people started as soon as I could. So I I, I I'm worried about timing. That's all. There. It, it's expensive not to be moving forward and I'd like to be able to move forward. And that's why we're qu quite comfortable with doing it on a phase one basis. Okay, I'm gonna address uh, the, the two people who are on the select board. Um, a lot of this would have been solved if I could have talked to the lawyer. And um, I, I would like to be able to talk to the lawyer when I need to do because these are the questions that I had for him. I would have had a, a, a definitive uh, decision made about can we cut back or what we can do. And uh, that didn't happen. And I, I think as chair, I should be allowed to uh, call and talk with our council so that when these questions come up that we have a general idea what our council says. Um, I'm, I'm a little upset about that, that uh, these are questions that I had that would, could have been very easily uh, answered by our council. So we came to the meeting, I could say, yes, board, we, these were discussed, this is what council said. So now we're going into this without council. Um, and I understand what they're saying, but what they're telling us and what legally can happen may be a different situation. But if the board feels comfortable moving forward, uh, absolutely, but I would like the board to initial the idea that I get to talk to council from time to time when, when necessary. Bernie, I, I'm truly sorry that you did not feel that you can call the council. All, 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 all the time you can, you know that. Oh, that's not what happened. And I don't wanna get in discussion with this. Uh, this is not the time and place, but maybe we can discuss that later. All right, board, um, do we have a consensus that we take a vote Mr. on? Chair, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Okay, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, hold it, Mr. Decker. I think uh, before we close off the discussion, you should ask if there's anybody in opposition uh, okay. or anybody else who's for it to speak. Because if we don't, we're, we would be remiss. Okay. Do we have anyone that's opposed to this uh, project? Nobody's saying anything, no okay. hands up. I like to go on record. I'm not opposed to this at all. I think it's a great project, but I just have, like Mr. Decker, I'm concerned about the, the stages we go through and what our legal uh, situation is. But if the board, the rest of the board is comfortable with that, I'm comfortable with that. All right, Mr. Chair. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chair, Mr. Sekulowski. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we close the public comment so we can move forward with deliberations and a vote. Okay. Second. I have a second. Okay, let's take a vote on that. Uh, Mr. Chair, this is Jen Remillard. I just want to ask, um, since Mr. Mr. Uh, Chairman, you need to, he's not here. We have um, to act on the motion yeah. first, Jen. Okay, sorry. Okay. Motion to close. Public uh, comment. Public comment. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Decker's voting, Alex is voting, David's voting, uh, I'm voting, and Adam's voting. Mr. Decker, motion to close. Yep. Yes. Yes. Alex. Yes. Um, I vote to close. And uh, Adam. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. David. David, I missed you. Sorry, David. David. That's okay. So David Potter, yes. Okay. Okay. So we've closed. Um, Did you get Adam? Did you get everybody? Yeah, Mr. Chair, did you determine which alternate was voting tonight? Yes, I did. I did. Okay. He said I, Alex. I said Alex is voting. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Although, Jennifer, I appreciate your uh, insight. I, uh, you made some ex excellent comments. Excellent. Thank comments. you. Um, we're going to move on with the discussion. Oh. Um, before we do that, I believe we can ask if the, if the applicant wants to withdraw. Isn't that how we normally do it? Before we get into this meeting, would you, do you want to go forward, Dom? 
Mr. Dubendorf. Myself, forgive me. <clears throat> I, I have five members, do I not? Yes, we do. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm pre quite prepared to go forward with okay. five. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Discussion by board. Comments. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. Based upon the statement from the petitioner's attorney, uh, they are dropping all matters relative to phase two and three from their application. Okay. And we're going to, and that we should agree to allow them to withdraw phase two and phase three without prejudice. Okay. That's my opinion. And that way it, it's clear. Okay, Miss, see if Mr. Durbinoff has any problem with it. None whatsoever, Mr. Chairman and, and Mr. Decker. We're happy to <clears throat> request the board to allow us to withdraw uh, the requests made with, with uh, for phases two and those subordinate uses proposed under phases two and three. So we would ask you to give us a motion to withdraw without prejudice. I can give you that motion if you want, Mr. Chair. Yes, I second that, David Potter. All right, I'll do the Adam Sokolowski for Alex, our, our wonderful scribe. Um, make a motion to allow the applicant to withdraw the requests under phase two and three of the application. Without prejudice. Without, without prejudice. prejudice. Okay. Do I have a second? David Potter, yes. second. David Potter, second. Okay, <laughs> let's take a vote. We have to take a vote on that, please. Mr. Decker. Yes. Um, Alex. Yes. David, yes. Um, yes. And Adam is yes. Okay. Adam, you yes. Mr. Yes. Chairman. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. I'd like to move that we uh, approve phase one as proposed and make the appropriate findings. Okay. Okay. Um, do I have a second? Uh, Adam Sikolowski, second. Okay, so we're gonna take a vote. We have discussion? Um, we have, Yeah, we can have discussion, we want it, but I don't think we we're gonna have any, but open to discussion on this. Discussion? Uh, yeah, David Potter. Yes, David. Uh, just people, I wanna be really clear that with the wording of this is we're not approving it right now, right? We're approving it subsequent or, you know, uh, pending um, the write-up of conditions and final wording uh, to be signed, sealed and approved at a date that we need to decide upon. You're talking about phase one, David? I'm talking about phase one, yeah, that we, 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 okay. we are not approving. We're, we're voting to approve down the road when our conditions have been written up and we have a document to sign, right? Isn't that how we did it last time? That's correct. <clears throat> That's but black and white. No, we vote it. We vote it tonight. The chairman signs it as long as it's in accordance with our vote. But then we That's come back later with on conditions. Written no. Up. So, so the conditions, to my understanding, is we're we're approving what the applicant has presented in phase one, including three special permits that they've asked for, the change of use, the height, and the signage. That's what we're approving tonight for the curbside delivery as they and the brewery operation, the change of use. So we're approving three special permits as presented tonight in phase one that town council Lisa Mead has already taken a look at the what the actual written finding would be. But we're in the spirit of what the applicant presented and we're voting to approve those three special permits tonight. There would be no follow up though as soon as they move on to phase two, they will come back to us and we'll have another hearing about the exact specifics of what they're going to build out in that phase. Okay, David, I think your question is about um, the conditions. Is that correct? Am I correct? Am well, I it, so it sounds like we actually have no conditions that, that the three things we're being asked for, we can approve. Uh, I certainly don't have any concern with them. I, I'm not going to lay any conditions on those, but uh, I was just remembering the process was, um, you know, uh, as that last time there were so many conditions that needed to be written up 
that we we uh, we had a kind of a two part approval process. But I'm comfortable here as long as everyone is comfortable moving forward and approving tonight. Mr. Okay. Chair, I yes. know I cannot speak because public commenting is, is public commenting um, closed. Okay, hang on a second. Um, board members, are we going to allow um, uh, another member to speak who is not a voting member? We already voted and approved that that would happen. Okay, we've done that. Last. Well, I think we have to do it each time. Does anyone have objections to having uh, Jennifer speak? No, no objection. Uh, no. Okay. The only thing that I would like to bring forward is a possible condition is like we talked about uh, just having the traffic counts done, um, whether it be twice a year, just to gauge um, where they're at before a, they come back or approval for phase two and three. That's it. Uh, David Potter. Yes, David. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I think, Jennifer, that in their best interest, they will present to us all the data that we're going to want to go forward with phase two, I'm sure they're going to bring that. You know, that's that's. I don't. I don't think you know, in the interest of efficiency, that that we need to mandate that and then write it up. And um, you know, I, I, I think that they've they've shown us, and we know that when they come back, we want that kind of data. But if you're not asking for it, then it's not mandatory for them to put it no, in their application. It's not, it's not mandatory, but neither is our approval, right? So we, if, if we're not happy with what they're showing us, we can ask for more at that time, but they'd be silly not to bring it. I'm yeah, talking- I tend to agree that with Mr. Potter, Mr. Uh, Chair, that I wouldn't support that condition because it's not even specific to what traffic count we're asking for. We don't, so that's why we're only approving phase one tonight. I was talking about when I mentioned before having a requesting a condition of a traffic count to be when they're open, active, and moving forward before they come back to the board. That it's provided once a year, twice a year, just to see um, moving forward for phase two, where they incorporate concerts and things along those lines. That was my only concern. Other comments. I agree with you, Jen. I think that uh, we need to look at that if we're going to make decisions about what they're going to do. I mean, to give them a, just not have information. Um, the traffic is a concern for me. I'll be very honest. It's a concern for me. Um, we've got three things that are, are, are critical on that, on five and 10. We've got the police department, uh, the fire, excuse me, fire department. We've got the uh, ambulance. And we've got the animal uh, hospital. So we've got that road has to be kept open. And we need to see what's going to happen there. And, you know, they can tell us what they're going to get for numbers, but they don't, they don't know. They could have uh, 500, 600 cars a day, um, which is going to impact what we're going to do. And, I, and I, I agree with you that we need, to, we need to have a traffic study. So when they come back to us again, that we can talk intelligently about what the traffic is going to be, which has been a concern. Um, I can't go back, but it's been a concern. So I agree with you. I think we should have a condition that they go in there, but I'm one voting member. And if people don't want to do it, that's fine. But I have a concern for it. And it's been a concern right along. Alex, you had a comment? Uh, yeah. And there's also a couple of hands up. Um, so I, I agree, Bernie. I think um, traffic is definitely a concern. And Jennifer, I appreciate um all of your comments earlier, you basically addressed and asked all of the questions that I had about the traffic. Um, I don't know if we necessarily need another traffic study, but I do think um, just what they provided before with the, um, the daily count for the number of cars um, over that like a couple of month period while they're open, I think that would be helpful. Um, I don't, I don't think it would be too much trouble. Um, and if it's a big ordeal, then it's a big ordeal. But um, I think it just would be helpful to plan for the future and sort of understand, okay, um, you know, this site is, um, you know, comparable to Charlton um, or it's not. Uh, it would just be helpful. You know, more data, whether you need it or not, is always good. Um, good the, the whole reason I brought that for, I'm sorry, Alex, were you finished? Oh, uh, the whole reason I brought that up is because, you know, um, 
the other two projects that were recently approved further up on five and 10, you know, one isn't too far away, the other one is further up. Um, but you've got the off for the, for both the highway north and south are south of the location. So, you know, you're gonna get different data and you might be able to determine more. And, um, you know, the company hiring a contractor or the DOT to do those traffic counts, I'm unsure as to who does those um, for, for the town for the town of Deerfield. Um, I'm only familiar with what I went through for Northampton for stuff. Um, I think it's important, you know, just to see where it ebbs and flows because if people, if you find the majority of the traffic is coming from the south, you know, from both the highway exits and nothing's really coming from five and 10 south, then, you know, maybe there needs to be a diversion or something different. I just think um, having that condition and providing the data just gives us more to look at when they come back for phase two and three. And it also gives our, our residents and our community members the, you know, the knowledge that we did our due diligence. Um, not, I, I, I support, you know, the entity coming in, I just want data because you can work from the numbers. And I would suggest they not be done on holidays or vacation weeks, um, you know, school vacation. It's just, you know, being at the high peak of when traffic is really important. Um, the biggest conversation about, you know, the, the second to last uh, passage, you know, the Dollar General was all of the traffic it was going to generate. So I, I think that, you know, we need to look at the, the traffic count from this because it's going to come from uh, from both, if you're familiar with the intersection right by where the EMS station is and the fire station is at that intersection where 116 is for the off ramp from south and then, you know, further down by the Wheatley Diner coming north. So those are just really important things to look at. Alex, do you agree with that? Yeah, no, I was, um, I was Mr. all for Chair. it. Um, I think, I think that's great. Yeah, uh, Mr. Sokolowski. Well, Mr. Dubendorf and Mr. Wolfram have their hands up. I don't know if you want to recognize them in this phase or not, but we, I don't think that they're going to come back to us unprepared without traffic counts. So I don't think it makes sense to make it a condition on this part of it. That's that's my point. Like, if we're not satisfied, well, first of all, they got to deal with the planning board. So if the planning board's not satisfied for phase two and wants more stuff done, whether it's traffic or whatever, then it's going to get done. I just don't think, I'm not going to support a condition on something specific that any applicant of this size with this much impact should be doing, will do anyways. And I don't know if they want to confirm that, if you want to recognize them, and then we can vote on the three special permits and move forward here. But you can't take someone, excuse me, Jennifer Remillard for transcription, uh, but you can't take someone's face value. By making it a requirement, you get the data. By not making it a requirement, you know, Mr. Dubendorf sounds due diligent now with the amount of data is being provided. My concern is that if it's not a legal requirement that they're gonna do it, it's not necessarily going to be in there. Plus, you don't know how factual and accurate the data they provide will be. They could come up with a number on a best guesstimate. It's not accurate data. When you have the traffic reports and the traffic counts, it's accurate data to the best of the ability during the time frame that we're given. We don't know, they could you know, decide to take um, their lowest traffic day and provide that data to us. I'm just looking for concrete information to base moving forward. And I think our community deserves that. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Decker. Uh, Mr. Dubernoff has withdrawn phase two and phase three at this point. I assume he's listening and he's learning listening to the comments and he understands the board's perspective going forward. It's going to be a brand new application when he comes back in. And I think all of your concerns and Alex's concerns and what have you will be addressed. Um, that's my opinion. And uh, if nobody has any objection, I'd like to move the question. Okay, I, I, I agree with Jennifer though. I, I'll be honest, I, I agree. You very well spoken on this and obviously you know um, quite a bit um, and you have a point of view. 
uh, and I respect that. Um, I'd like to sit in there, but I'm only one member of the board. Uh, if it's in writing, then then they'll, and I don't think that they're going to be there. It's going to be a problem for them. I think that they'd be more than willing to do this. I don't think it's going to be a problem. But if it's in writing, then we can expect to get it. Um, and I don't think that's too much to expect of them. Uh, like I'd like to move forward in this project, but we need to look at things that, that are going to change. And we this is going to be a running operation. I don't care what anyone tells me. This is going to be a running operation and there's going to have to be changes made. Because no one can predict exactly what this is going to look like. They can tell us the numbers, but until they open the gates up, they're not going to know how many people are going to be coming in and out of, the, out of, of their facility. Um, Bernie. Hope, hope, excuse me. Hopefully it'll work out. I, I, I'm, I'm sure it will, but we, we got to go with what was there. Um, if we're going to vote on a, a condition, fine. If not, then we'll move on. It will take a vote and we'll, and we'll go from there. But thank you, uh, Jennifer, for your comments. You're uh, welcome. Jennifer. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer. David Potter. Yeah, David Potter has his hands up, and I don't. Yeah. Are you, you closed it from? Yes, we did. We only opened it up for our. For the for, board, right? Yeah. Okay. So, David. Sorry, Dave, and sorry, Don. Yeah. No, that's okay. Thank you. Yeah, David Potter. Um, I'd like to make a motion to vote on the three special permits with no conditions. It's already been made, Mr. Potter. Oh, great. Well, Mr. Decker, I, I, I made that motion close already. This Mr. Decker asked to call the question. <laughs> okay. okay, I'm sorry. You need a uh, second on it, though. Second in Mr. Decker. Dave yeah, already done it. It's true. We both did. Okay. So, uh, do we need a motion to close the discussion? Uh, yes, we do. No, I we. No, you don't. Not with a no, motion. you don't. To move no. the question. You have a vote on the motion to close, to call the question. That's right. Did Motion on the question. Okay. Ernie? I'm sorry. Um, this is Alex. Um, uh, yeah. Could, could a Adam, did you make the motion? I did. I made the original motion that was seconded by Mr. Decker and Mr. Potter that we uh, move to approve the special permit, the uh, three special permits for phase one. Did, did you just need my name or did you need me to restate it? Um, uh, Restate it. I got, okay. I got most of it. I made a motion that we approve the three special permits this evening for phase one as presented that included the change of use to a brewery, that included the signage, and included the height as requested. And then okay. we allowed the applicant to withdraw phase two and three without prejudice as part of that motion. Okay. You got that, Alex? Okay. So the vote is to um, grant a, a special permit um, with a... This is to call a question, Bernie. I'm sorry. This... <coughs> or call a question. Adam Sokolowski, yes. Alex. Yes. David. Yes. Um, I vote yes, and uh, Adam Sokolowski? Yes, and after, now we're going to call the question. Now we'll vote on the original motion. <coughs> you didn't record my vote, Bernie. Yes. Yeah, I put down yes. I'm sorry. Can you put your camera on, Bob, please? Why? Oh, I, I don't need to. Yes, you do. Allegedly, you. some rule says we're supposed to have our cameras on when we're voting. Oh, yeah. Well, I turned it on. I haven't Eight. seen that rule in writing, but maybe it's a policy. Okay. General. How do you do it? Okay. So we're going to um, vote on the application. Am I correct? Yes. yes. You want me to read it? No. I'm supposed to read it. Okay. Read it again. Well, I can't read it because I can't find my papers. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I got it. The application for Treehouse Brewing for a special permit to change use of the former Channing Beach site to a major commercial project as provided in the zoning bylaws, one, chapter 179, subsection 2200, replacing signs, um, section 175, subsection 3200 to a height of existing buildings, 179-2300. Uh, so that's what we're voting on. Okay. 
vote. Mr. Decker. Yes. Uh, Alex. Yes. David. Yes. Uh, I vote yes. Adam. Yes. Okay, unanimous five votes to uh, accept and uh, grant the special uh, permit to um, Treehouse Brewery. Brewery. So uh, I just want to make a slight correction because it was chapter 179. Yes, 179. 3200 for the- 2200 it says. Yeah, 2300 for the, so first it's 3200 for the height. That's right. And and then it's 2300 for the for, for the uh, existing building, yes. Isn't yeah. that what I said? No. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, are we looking for any conditions here? No, we've already voted it. Yeah, we voted it already. Okay. We're well, look, and now let me correct you that we've in the past come up with correction with uh, with with the requirements afterwards because we did it on the um, the other place. For special oh. conditions, we voted in the motion, Bernie. Okay, all right. That ends it for that. Does and the, does the applicant so, have anything else they want to say before we move on to our other business? It's almost my bedtime. Uh, may I speak, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, thank you very much for this evening for your time. <clears throat> there is no Don question. Dubinor. I'm sorry. I just said your name, Don Dubendorf. Oh, Don Dubendorf. There's no question but that we we will have traffic studies before phase two. We have to. Your bylaw does require it. And uh, DOT will require it of us as well if we get to certain triggers. So we're in the process of thinking all that through and have, have traffic engineers engaged to do that work. So uh, just to make it clear, that's that's something we're already working on because we have to. Uh, we we can't we couldn't proceed with phase two or three without all that work being done, and we'll be as thorough on each of those phases as we were this evening. So thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to the airfield. <laughs> all right, we've got um, so that closes that section. We're gonna go. We want to go back to uh, review minutes and review. Mr. Sadowski, I have a question. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, are we meeting again at a regularly scheduled meeting in May? I would assume we're going to. Okay. Do I have any objections to that? Uh, no, I just was just cu curious. Well, okay. That's a good question because there's been some controversy about uh, my position of calling meetings without board members. Oh, I think it's within your right to do it. I well, I maybe might not no. be the best business practice, but well, the chairman historically can can yeah. call meetings when they see fit. And further, the chairman can set the agenda. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but I do have a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, I think it should be understood that this board has been given a charge by by the board of selectmen and what have you. And this is our position, okay? People shouldn't be drafting decisions for us in advance. I don't think it's in good taste. They could give us outlines of things that they don't want us to miss, but to draft decisions for us uh, without us directing it, I don't think it is really a good idea. So. Comments. Um, uh, this is Jennifer Remillard. I was sorry. I was going to say, Mr. Decker, I don't believe they drafted a decision for the ZBA. They drafted a decision for the planning board and they were sending out. that out. No, you didn't listen to Mr. Dubendor. He yes, said that he drafted the zoning decision and he sent it to council. It was sent to council for approval and it never came to any of our board members that I know of. It unless. Was Unless Mr. Staberski saw it, I don't know. I that was no, for the he, planning board. No, that was no, no, no. Yay! Oh, that yeah. one. Oh, please, one person at a time. Uh, it's. I know we're tired, 
Uh, but please, one person at a time, because we have to record this. And poor Alex is going to get confused. I, I, I understand that's a difficult job. So please, one person at a time. Okay. Um, we have a hand up here somewhere. Okay, Jen, you have your hand up. Yes. So we did get two decisions written from Attorney Dubendorf. And I spoke with Casey about it, and she felt that we really needed to check with council before forwarding that to any of the board members. So we didn't do that. Um, we did, I mean, it was very well written in the sense of outlining our criteria and then their answers to the criteria. And it was more of a guide. So he wrote it as a decision. We didn't want it to say that it was a decision more that it was a, a guide or um, something for, for the board to follow instead of it saying that he's writing your decision, right? So um, we just decided not to give it to the board without having it looked at from council and council didn't get back to us with it. So we just proceeded as we would normally. So it wasn't Don, like hiding. Don, hiding Don was or... trying to, um, Bernie, Bernie, Don was trying to help us um, keep our expenses down and to help our office knowing that it is town meeting and budget time as well as multiple meetings. And so he uh, streamlined a guide or draft and it was yeah, forwarded to our lawyers. Lisa Me did change some of the planning board, the first sentence or so um, when I talked, spoke to her and she was waiting for your decision tonight to then review the draft article and then send it back to be um, filed. It was to help the filing speed of the filing because you have a 21 day appeal period. And the idea was to move this along as fast as possible um, and be as accommodating as we could to Treehouse uh, because they um, have been so patient and waiting. Uh, Jennifer, is that, am I correct? And that was the paper you were gonna show me the other day when it was in there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, he gave it to me as sort of, he said, you know, share it. And I said, you know, Casey, what do you think? And she's like, let's let counsel. And I asked um, attorney Dubinorf if he would change it. So it didn't say decision, but said sort of, it was a, uh, a statement um, just because it just, it was very good. It would outlined everything, but you know, we want to have it in our format that the town does and, and make sure that it is included all the details that we have historically kept in our decisions. And um, so, I mean. It helps reduce our legal fees. It's not it a big does. deal. And it, and it was well organized and it, was well um, and it had a place, well written and it was, it had places for, you know, blank spaces for conditions or other details. So it was, it was just a template. I don't think that there was anything to worry about. Well, you know, you're lucky that you're not paying this board for this because we spent a lot of time. If I was well, getting, a, if it was getting a dollar an hour, I uh, I could pay half my taxes. Well, Oof. thank you for your, your yeah, time. I'll, I'm sure I've made some enemies, so I always seem to be good at that. And you know, I was thinking, what we should have is like what I used to do in school, a talking stick. Oh, uh, I I can't i got a different computer tonight and i can't find the raise my hand button so it's not just you bernie oh, okay. can we move on with the next agenda item yeah. so we can get to okay. our cribs so do we have any questions about having a meeting a month from now that was what i was going to ask uh, going back to that does anybody objects to us having a meeting a month from now so it won't be at the normal time of the second tuesday or thursday or whatever it second is thursday would be the normal meeting yes yes yeah okay okay well do a month i have from any now is is the four Jen? So. Jen, is that you with your hand up? No, I'm sorry. Okay. It was okay. me just commenting, just saying a month from now would be the fourth Thursday. So that's why I wanted clarification that it was our normal meeting time of the second Thursday of the month. That's all. Thank okay. you for clarifying, Adam. Okay. So, yeah. sorry. Adam, okay, one more question, Bernie. Are we are we moving back to seven if the agenda's light? Or are we keeping yes, it at six? I, 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 Again, um, is people are people comfortable with that? 
I'm oh, yeah. comfortable with either way. I, sure. If there's not a lot going on, I just, I usually like, you know, I get up early in the morning, so I usually am, you know. Sleeping by seven o'clock? No, nine. Okay. But, no, no. Uh, Jen Gannett's got her hand up. Okay. Yes, Jen. So I have it already scheduled for six o'clock on the 13th of May. Okay. Okay. Now I got another it's question. Different. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, Adam, go ahead. Can we get get back to doing these in the town hall or we're going to keep zooming them? Zooming. Sorry, until we open town hall. Sorry. Election on Monday in the town hall. Say that again. The election in the town hall on Monday. That is correct. Yes, but our Zoom meetings are going to be on, I mean, our, our <laughs> hearings and our meetings are still going to be on Zoom until August. You know, it costs an extra two dollars and fifty cents, Bob, to register your dog online. No, it oh, does. Adam, stop yeah. poking hey, it. Adam, Adam, if you're over seventy, it doesn't cost anything for a free dog. <laughs> yeah, I should have had you register my puppy. <laughs> yeah. Close enough. Hey, okay, don't okay, we need to go to bed. <laughs> okay, um, Mr. Chairman, I have one thing before you adjourn. Oh. Could we put executive session on an, on our next agenda? I want to report on the pending litigations. Okay. Um, that's a question that I had in, re in reference to us making conditions. And I was not getting an answer because I think it determines what we do. And I was told it didn't make a difference. Well, I think it does. Um, if, if some of the things that we got and, and legally were turned down, then we, we need to know that so that when we go in there, we're not hiring a lawyer to go back in court to uh, justify what we've done. I mean, uh, we're talking about saving money. Well, I, I think is the board needs to know that some of the things that we asked for either were accepted or not. Um, this, that's my opinion, but whatever. Well, I agree with Mr. Decker. Maybe we should put it on the, you, Mr. Chair, if you wish to have it on the agenda, maybe you could consult with the selectman's office and see if Mr. Acosta can zoom in with us to give us some type of update. And I don't mind if it's an executive session or not. Okay. Well, I, I, I concur. So we'll put that on the docket. Okay. Quickly review of minutes. Do we agree with the view of minutes? Or do we, do I have a, a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. So moved. Okay. Do I, have a, do I have a second? Adam Sokolowski, second. A second. Okay. Vote to accept minutes. Any discussion? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ms. Rambillard, you get to vote on this. Okay. I'm going to give you a chance to vote since you did such a nice job tonight. Okay. Maybe that's wrong. I don't know, but that's what I did. Um, we're voting on minutes. Accepting minutes. Mr. Decker. I'm going to abstain. Alex? Uh, yes, I think yes. that's great. Uh, David? Yes. Uh, Jennifer? Yes. And Adam? Uh, one question, if you don't yes. mind. I'm okay. sorry, go ahead. Is the recording attached? We wanted the recording attached to the minutes. Alex, does that part of it, put, part of the record? I put the link to the town's website and the YouTube channel. If you would like the specific link to the video, I can do that instead of the, just the general YouTube link um, to the town's channel. If you want me to get specific, I can. I think just that's best for, if you didn't do it on the past one, I'll still vote to approve it. But I would say that if we put the exact link on, then that's part of the official record. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. I can do that. I'm pretty sure I, I'll have to look, but I'm pretty sure I did, but. I did see the linkage. Thanks for all your effort in that work. Sure. Okay. So we voted to accept the, the, um, the minutes. Um, old business uh, discussion of application. I, I'd like to table that till I've been up since four o'clock this morning and I, I'm, I'm shocked. So I would like to table that. I'll make a motion to adjourn then, Adam Sekulowski. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Motion to second adjourn. David Potter. Do I have a second? David. Yes, Potter. David Potter. Um, Mr. Decker. Yes. Alex. 
Yes. Um, David. Yes. Jen. I don't get to vote if Alex voted. <laughs> oh yeah, because I'm abstaining. You're getting the vote. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, we can we can move adjourn the meeting and move that to another time. Okay, and Adam. Yes. Okay. The meeting is adjourned. Uh, Jen, I just want to, you know, you, you, I feel bad that you have to sit there, and, but that's the way it goes. All right. I'll see you next uh, two Thursdays from now on the 13th at 6 p.m. And the first hour will be executive session if Mr. Costa can join us. Yes. Great. I will try to get a hold of him next week. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. The select board will adjourn their meeting as well. Carol, you were in with us? Yes, we I opened my meeting and we've had a we had a joint meeting, I'm, Bernie. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Thank you, Carolyn. Oh, I'm sorry, Carolyn. No, that's fine. I we did a joint meeting because I wanted to share about the um, you know, that I had talked to Lisa Mead and that, you know, we had um, other the, the, the disclosure for Bob the disclose we had to devote the disclosure for Bob so he could vote you know there was we had no choice I'm glad I can I, I gotta plead the ignorance of some of this stuff and being up too long okay thank you good night everyone okay thank good you night. good night thank you